Welcome back guys. We're working on the 308 again. And I said in the end of the last episode, I'm gonna pull the engine out and get started on planning out a fuel cell and spent the next you know handful of hours getting pretty excited about that. However, change of plans because last night, my buddy Robbie from CSF stopped by with a bunch of cooling parts for the car and said, hey, let's find out if any of this stuff fits. And it turns out his high performance universal racing radiator is a perfect fit. I mean, if I had custom drawn something up in CAD, it would have been this. I cannot believe how perfectly it fits just sitting right down in it. I'm excited to show you guys. Mounting this thing is gonna be a breeze and I'm so pumped about it. I'm gonna go on and do that today. And that means we're gonna cut a bunch of material out of the front of the car. I'm gonna cut out that whole front substructure because we can get rid of it, we don't need it. We've got some other cooling plans that I can talk about. We've got some oil coolers. We've got a potential heat exchanger for fitment. Got all sorts of cool stuff. I'm excited to start working on the front of the car. Gives me a break from the back end. I love bouncing around. So let's dive into it. See what we get done. So this is the radiator itself. And I have no idea if you guys can tell on screen how big it is, but it's huge. And it's kind of a universal triple pass racing application. It's got a dash 16 fitting on one end and a dash 20 on the other. And we're gonna have to relocate these ports to the back side to fit it in the car properly. But like I said, this thing fits perfect. And if you don't remember what the front of the car looks like or you haven't seen those episodes, here's what we're working with. I have not cleaned it out yet, but essentially the current plan is to have our water to air heat exchanger sit where the factory radiator did uh, vertically. I'm gonna basically use those factory mounts and fill this space with it. And then we're going to uh, mount the radiator angled behind it. And I wanted to use these chassis rails to do that. Turns out that's gonna be perfect. I'll show you guys shortly. And it also means we're gonna cut out all of this structure underneath it, replace it with some really simple stuff, try to lose some poundage here. I think we're gonna have to pull the valence off of the car. We're gonna be replacing that with a new one anyway. So might as well get that out of our way. I don't really wanna cut it up if I don't have to. It's probably worth some money. And we've got a lot of trimming to do. I need to get stuff like this cut off and out of the way because we're not gonna use that. Probably cut that tab off, get this guy out of the way. Got some stuff to pull out, but let me show the show you guys how the radiator actually fits in the car because it's it's pretty sick. So it's just Sitting in here for now, and the biggest thing up front is that we're gonna have to clear in some of this sheet metal here so it can actually lay on the frame rails. However, we also have stuff on the frame rails we've gotta get off, because it's gonna collide with those. But what's really cool is that this mount here used to be for a battery quick disconnect, so it's flush with the outside of the frame rail. And if we look, essentially, the edge of the end tank is perfectly in line with the frame rail, so we can make some really simple tabs coming off of the end tank to mount it to the chassis. And what's perfect is that it's the exact same situation on the other side. I mean, these things are just perfectly in line with each other down to the fraction of an inch. Once we square the radiator up a little bit, it'll fit even better. So. We'll bring it forward a little bit so it's not sitting down against the sway bar. We're gonna cut this stuff up, make some room here, probably pull our hinges out of the way. I'll probably start by trying to get this valence off. And then we'll uh, start making some mounts. Removing this valence proved to be pretty tricky because there are seven bolts on each side of this thing, which is entirely excessive if you ask me. Several of them were even covered in seam sealer and some kind of sound deadening material, which made just the entire removal process a huge pain. On top of that, there were several screws on the bottom that were all kind of ground down from hitting the pavement and a series of rivets. Getting this thing off was a major chore, but thankfully my girlfriend Emily was around at the end to help me get the thing off. Now 
With the valence off, I went on and moved towards throwing some blankets over the car to cover up for sparks, as there's a lot of cutting to do today. And I'm sure there's a few of you guys wondering where the 3M spark paper that I had used in a previous episode went, because it's been gone for a bit. And the honest answer is the paper worked really well, but it also did leave behind a slight faint residue, even though the adhesive on the paper is really lightweight. I found the residue kind of a pain to remove and decided it just wasn't worth the hassle, so I've gone back to the old school method of some blankets. I got out the old reciprocating saw and then turned my attention towards the lower structure in the car. As mentioned, we're going to get rid of pretty much all of it because it's heavy, it's old, it's a bit corroded from holding a battery before, and one of the bars is ever so slightly bent from having a jack pressed underneath it. Cutting this stuff off was really straightforward. I just ran the reciprocating saw through everything until the whole thing kind of fell free into the ground. Some of the angles were kind of tough to get with the saw, so the following process is going back through and cleaning a lot of it up. The part itself was not as heavy as I had hoped that it would be, but it is a pretty serious and big chunk of metal, so it is a good net gain. And if I had to guess, the car with the new mounts and the radiator in place probably weighs about the same as this piece once removed. I took the angle grinder and got in there and cut off all of the kind of stubs that remained and at some point I will need to go back in and cap over all of these with some sheet metal. They're not open to the inside of the chassis or anything, but they're kind of unsightly. I'm using a piece of chalk and the ruler to mark out on the upper sheet metal where I want to clearance it so that the radiator can actually fit into the car. And I initially made these the same side to side. However, the driver's side of the car did need a much bigger cut in the end to actually clear the end tanks of the radiator itself. Using the drill on the corners of these cutouts to make them easier to actually cut and to give me a better finished shape. It saves some of the hassle of trying to shape the corners once I'm done. And it'll give me a place where I can fit the air reciprocating saw in to actually cut these out. As always, the air saw is problematic and picky to use, but eventually it did cut through everything that I asked it to. And then I went back with the angle grinder one more time and cut out the extra bracketry in the engine bay so that the radiator can finally drop into place. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out exactly how to mount this radiator and a bunch of different ideas went through my head. The biggest kind of breakthrough on anything was I realized I didn't want to solid mount the radiator to the car. I wanted it isolated in some way if possible because chassis flex and aluminum radiators do not like flexing. I figured I would add some tabs to the sides of the end tank that would come down to the sides of the chassis and bolt into them and I even found some cool rubber bushings and some awesome shouldered bolts that I could use to tighten down through them without actually collapsing the rubber, which would help give the whole thing some flexibility and save it from vibration. However, I realized I would have to weld stuff to the end tanks and that makes replacing the radiator more of a pain in the ass if I have to go do that down the road. I then decided maybe I'll do some clamps that'll go around the end tanks and hold it down to the chassis. And I even drew some up in CAD but I realized that's not gonna hold the radiator as well as I would like to. While my ultimate solution isn't really isolated, it's gonna have some vibration proofing and I think it's gonna work out. I wound up finding a bunch of these tabs in a box of mine because I don't throw anything away and I've got some weld nuts that I can put on them. Together, along with some tubing, I can make a structure that'll hold the radiator using the end plates on it 
and I think if I use some sealing and some rubber gaskets and some neoprene washers between the radiator and my tabs, I think this thing will work out pretty well. As mentioned, this is all stuff that I just had lying around from previous projects. It's some metric weld nuts and some just cheap CNC water jetted kind of general purpose tabs. And depending on where you buy these tabs, they can be pretty expensive, but if you hunt around on the internet, you can find them for a few cents a pop. So I've got a pretty good supply of them and it works out perfectly for instances like this. These tabs are gonna to attach to a tube to support the radiator. So I pulled out a piece of one inch DOM tubing to span the car. And this will add some structure in that will replace some of the stuff that we cut out. The first cut, thankfully, was a perfect fit. So I went on and ground down all of the undercoating and chassis paint so that we can weld this thing in. Before actually welding everything in, I did do a lot of test fitting and mocking up because I really wanted this to work and work well. I also did need to modify the radiator just a touch by widening the mounting holes on it one size so that those eight millimeter bolts will fit through the holes. Then came the undercar welding, which on my back was a bit tricky, but thankfully everything went pretty smooth. I got the tabs tacked into place and was able to remove the radiator without bumping them or wiggling them out of place. With the radiator out, I climbed into the engine bay and actually welded them into place. All right, off camera, I got this thing put back in and bolted into place, and it fits pretty well. I'm happy with it. We've got to get the upper bar in place, so I went on and bolted our upper tabs in. I'm gonna cut our upper tube to length, clean this surface up, get everything tacked in, and we should, at that point, have a mounted radiator, and then we gotta run out and grab one other part so that we can call at least this portion here finished up. The process for the upper bar is exactly the same as the lower one. I measured it out and then followed that by cutting the tube and fitting it to the car. Before actually welding the tube in, I had to clean up the base material, get all of the kind of paint and undercoating off of it, and then I was off to the races. Before welding it, I sharpened up some tungsten, and now that I have a bench grinder, this is definitely my preferred way to do it. It might not be the best, but it is super quick and gives a great fine tip point every time. As mentioned, there is one final part and step that I want to do, and the first part of that is cleaning off the tops of the chassis rails. I want to adhere a seal to them, and I'm going to need a good surface to do that with, although I will have to redo these seals later once I actually paint things. What I'm using for a seal is this stick-down bulb seal that I bought from a local hardware store, and it's only a few cents a foot. This stuff has a super strong adhesive on the bottom of it, and it is nice and collapsible, so the radiator should seal down on this stuff really well, and that's going to help for ducting and it'll keep it from being too solid mounted against the chassis. And with that stuff stuck down, here's the finished result of the mounted radiator. It seals perfectly against the frame rails, and while the seals need a little bit of trimming, I'm really happy with how this came out. The rubber is high temp and should be perfect for this application too.
As mentioned before, the radiator really does fit perfectly between these frame rails, and I'm just ecstatic with how the entire project turned out today. I'm glad that I also didn't have to modify the radiator at all, at least so far. Seeing it from underneath is exciting as well because there's a lot of ducting here and it has required no legwork. We can improve it further down the road too. The way this thing fits here, I don't think we're leaving any cooling capability on the table. And I think it's going to work perfectly for the level of power that I'm hoping we're going to make when this thing actually runs. All right guys, that's a project done. This one took a little bit longer than I expected it to. The weekend kind of got in the way, but that's kind of how weekends go, right? But I'm really happy with how it came out. The radiator is just as big as it could possibly be. It looks huge in the engine bay, and I don't think we could put a bigger one in there. There might be a little bit of room if we did some like custom stuff for height and we could start chopping up things to go wider on width, but it might actually interfere with wheel and tire clearance down the road. So I think what we have right here is absolutely perfect. And best of all, it is a bolt-in application because we have not had to modify it so far. We might have to move one of the lower water ports, but so far we're in the clear and I'm excited about it. If I need to replace this thing for any reason, if I mess up and do something stupid, I can grab one off the shelf and bolt it right in. And that is a perfect place to be. In the next episode, I think we will move to the back of the car. I'll pull the engine out and we'll start mocking up a fuel cell, or maybe I'll stay up front and do some sheet metal work. Haven't decided yet. In any case, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate the support. If you've liked the content, please do subscribe, show some love, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought of the episode. I'll catch you guys on Thursday.